Hello, welcome to Carlton Blue. My name's Dan Rowan, so I'm joined once again by Neil from the For the Love of Paul McGraw podcast. Here with a bit of a bonus show, actually. Uh, the England squad was announced at two o'clock this afternoon, Thursday. Obviously, Villa play Hibs tonight, so if you're watching this before Hibs, go and enjoy the game. We're here just to talk about the England squad a little bit. The, the irony is not lost on me to discuss the England squad with an Irishman. Neil, how are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. And we, yeah, as you say, I never actually thought about that, discussing the England squad. <laughs> and I ain't even English. <laughs> but you are very good at what you do and you you speak well about Aston Villa and that's what that's what we're here to do, really. The title of this video is going to be something like, you know, what more does Esri Conks have to do to get into the England squad? I feel really conflicted about it at times when the, the announcement came at two o'clock. We heard a few rumblings before two o'clock that... Uh, Conte wasn't going to be in the squad and Harry Maguire was and Villa weren't going to have any representation in the squad at all no, no Ollie Watkins either obviously no Tara Mings for obvious reasons when that first, that news first drops I kind of go that's outrageous Like there should be players in there Villa should have this kind of representation at, at national level and then the other side of my brain goes oh, I just don't care well, I, I'm going to come at this from the point of view of an outsider looking in I think because uh I suppose, actually, I won't. I, I'll answer firstly. From a Villa point of view, I don't really care because we have enough games coming up. It'd be good mm. for our players to stay together, to train together, to maybe even get those extra days off. Um, I'm worried about Claret and Blue. Um, and that would even be if we had any players that would be potentially uh, called up to the Irish squad as well. I'm worried about Claret and Blue um, for, for the time being. But to look at the squad itself, you know, you look at the centre halves that have been named there. You know, you've got Levi Colwell. Has, has, he, has he done more than Ezra Kanza to get into the squad? No. Lewis Dunk, yeah, I actually, I, I agree with Lewis Dunk being in there. I'm, I'm happy to see him in there. Happy to see the likes of Mark Gray in there as well. But the one one person I'm really happy to see in there, and I think I think it actually kind of shows a small a bit of a, a bit of a, a shift in, in, in mindset from, from Southgate, because this guy has been playing really well for AC Milan, and that's Fikai, uh, Fikai Tamuri, um, who's been absolutely great for um, for AC Milan. He took the took the plunge to go out there to Serie A, a, mm. a league that's been known for defensive um, uh, the, the learning the defensive craft as well. Now, obviously, the elephant in the room is a big Harry Maguire shaped elephant. You know, he's been named there, and he hasn't kicked the ball in anger. I think that's crazy. The thing that annoys me about it is you hear things from Gareth Southgate when Grealish wasn't being picked for Villa back in the Championship days of well, he's playing in the Championship. He's not playing at the top yeah. level yet. As we, oh, we've got to pick players on form. We can't just pick favourites. And the favourites still get in the squad. Someone like Maguire is insane as a pick to me. I don't know what the value is to have him in there. If you're talking about international football being the pinnacle of football, which, to be honest, is debatable anyway. I think, well, Cups and, and Championships, yes, but qualifiers and friendlies is pre-season stuff, isn't it? You're not telling me that England are going to have struggles against Ukraine and, and, and Scotland over these next couple of fixtures. Like They should be able to beat them with, with the amount of talent they have available. But if you're not even playing for your club side, how do you get picked for the national side? Calvin Phillips the same. Played zero That's, minutes uh, between them. That's mad. Exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say it's the Calvin Phillips conundrum. You know, Man. what do you have to do? Like, what does Calvin Phillips have to do? Like, it's it's like as if the less he plays, the more Southgate is going to be enamoured to have a look at it. N- never before has a, has, a, has a player star dulled so quickly. And, uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, so predictably, international managers will go to people that they know they can rely mm. on. But I have no idea... How Southgate can be one hundred percent sure he can rely on Calvin Phillips and Harry Maguire based on the last twelve months of football that the two of them haven't played. I, I get that. Just, I, I did a tweet earlier in preparation, knowing that we were going to do this and to get a bit of a wider opinion. And I just put Villa fans should Ezri Conte be in the England squad, and the overwhelming majority is yes, absolutely. On ability, he is good enough to play for his national side. But is it a surprise that he doesn't get picked for Southgate? Absolutely not. Like, no one thought he was actually going to be in with a shout. Yes, Conte made that mistake, didn't he, against Newcastle United on the opening day. He played in a, t- in a side that conceded five goals. He kept a clean sheet against Everton, who haven't scored a goal. So that's not really a, a, a ringing endorsement either. So I get that Conte has not had this brilliant start to this season. But he's been very good over the last 12 months or so and improved his game under an iron route. I don't, I don't want this to just be a Maguire versus Conte thing, but that is the obvious shootout. It's not even that Maguire's played better than Conte this season so far and that Conte's had a bit of a ropey start. Conte's ropey start is better than zero minutes. I just can't get my head around that one at all. Just to clarify, I'm editing this back. When I say ropey start, I mean the Newcastle game. Specifically, uh, my assistant editor told me I better clarify that before people start saying that I'm saying that Ezra Conte isn't a good footballer. We conceded five on the first day. 
That's what I mean by a ropey start. Thanks for that. And and to, and to answer the question about Kanza, I'm not surprised he wasn't in the squad. He just doesn't seem to be a face that fits for uh, for uh, Gareth Southgate. I'm actually more surprised that Connor Cody isn't in the squad because there's another guy who just can't seem to yeah. can't seem to get dropped from the squad as well. Um, but he's not. And, and as I say, that seems like that's what I was talking about. Uh, a small bit of progress there. But the golden boy at the moment is Levi Caldwell. That's that's what the, the like. That's where we are at this moment in time. This time last year, the golden boy was Mark Way. The golden boy mm-hmm. isn't Desri Kanza, and he needs to put himself into that position. And maybe he has, and that I suppose that's what, what, what the debate would be for Twitter is, has he put himself in that position to be that golden boy? Or has he been the player that we know is good, but has always played in the shadow of Tyrone Mings? And is Possibly. this the year that he comes out? Does he break mm-hmm. out to be, does he break out to show everybody what, what, what he does? Because we know he's a good footballer. But yeah. maybe playing in the shadow of Tyrone Mings has hurt him from an international standpoint previously. Yeah, it's like I said before, though, I don't think Scotland and Ukraine will pose any real danger for England in a, in a qualifier game. England, could, I mean, they could, of course, yes, but in uh, theory... Are you telling me Scotland, the Scotland guys aren't going to eat nails and, uh, and uh, nails for breakfast before they go, go and play England? Well, John know. McGinn will, of course. John McGinn's a very yeah. good player, but overall, <laughs> England's quality should out, outweigh Scotland's. Should. And you know, you, you you see England getting all the way to a tournament, having won the ten qualifiers that precede it, or, or however many it is. So, I get kind of picking you, you, either your favourites or knowing what those players will offer to the squad because they have been in the camp together. All of a sudden, mm. plucking Ezra Conson, who's never been in an England camp before, you know, brings some instability possibly. But like I said, you've got to try new things at some point. Um, like Levi Caldwell, that's why yeah, I say he's the yeah, golden boy. You know, not, no, no minutes for England. He's in there. Is it, is it, mm, is yeah, it, true. I, I, I would be surprised. I'd say he nearly starts. I mean, there was a line in the in the press conference from Southgate saying, you know, there's a lot of players unavailable at centre half. I think Cody might actually be injured, or, or you certainly reference all he's playing in the championship now with with Leicester. Uh, Ming's obviously out for the season, and there was one other that I've forgotten. So you're saying you need some experience in that position. Colwell's not experienced in, in, in England, certainly. And also in the Premier League, he's still a young player. Like out of those players you've listed there, Conter's appearances probably make him the most experienced player there. And and even at international level, I would imagine that's what he's talking about. Levi Colwell, no international caps. Lewis Dunk won international cap. Mark Gray, four international caps. Tamori, three international caps. Harry Maguire, 57 international caps. So he makes a plausible argument as to why, why Maguire was in there. But then the other argument is, well, why are you carrying so many other people around him that are inexperienced? Why, don't you, why didn't yeah. you put in a, another experienced player? And then he goes back to injury. So he's got all these bases covered from that yeah. point of view. So he does make a plausible argument. But there comes a time where you got to just grab the nettle. You know, you got to grab the nettle mm-hmm. at some stage. I nearly even believe if he named Ben Me instead of Harry Maguire, he would have got less flack for it, you know? And, and that's not to say, like, we are, uh, us as Aston Villa fans, <laughs> we know what we feel about Ben Me, yeah. you know? So uh, it's it's just, it's it's an interesting one. If he is talking about, about experience in the Premier League uh, over international experience, then it makes no sense. But if he's talking about international experience, there is a thinly veiled excuse there that he could he could muster with regards to Harry Maguire uh, but and I think look I think it's important to say as well Harry Maguire isn't a bad footballer but it's it's what Southgate has previously said about yeah. what you need to do to get into his squad he's at every juncture since has completely contradicted himself and that's yeah. and that's and he should be scrutinized for that like I said at the start, I, I, my brain comes at this from two sides of the argument that I, I really care and I will, yeah, really, really feel sorry for Conter as a professional and as an individual of not getting the opportunity to go and play for your national side. And the other side of me just thinks about Villa and thinks, oh, that's all I care about. This is probably a good thing for Aston Villa who have, I was going to say a centre-back crisis then. I suppose we've lost one in Toro Mings, but Conter has got to step up and fill that void alongside Torres and Carlos this season and, and Longley, I suppose, as well if he signs at some point in the next day. So if, if anything, it's a good thing, isn't it? In some aspects, no extra games for Conter, no travelling, and most importantly, no opportunity for him to get injured either. We need to concentrate on ourselves. I, and, and I think that's one thing I love about Unai Emery is you do get this mm. feeling of he wants to galvanise this team. He wants to... Be, and and look, I'm not saying this is a precursor to potentially no business being done done on deadline day tomorrow uh, outside of Langley. But, um, you know, you do get the feeling that he wants to galvanise uh, a small group of players together. Mm. And he did that last season. 
And I think that Ezri Kanza, I think the respect that that team manager has and gets from those players just oozes out on the field. And maybe the same respect isn't there for for uh, for Southgate. You know, so I put it this way: what I'm trying to say here is, you ask Ezri Kanza, are you gutted you didn't get in the squad? Yeah. Uh, would you? Uh, but then, if you ask him at the same time, can you see the benefits of you staying at home at Aston Villa? and uh, getting to work on your shape work while everybody else is disjointed in a way and then being in a better position uh, as a team to then hit the ground running in the Premier League and uh, and, and the Europa Conference League. You say, oh, absolutely, yeah, because if Aston Villa finish in the top four and Villa win the, the Conference League, well, then you can't overlook players like Ezri Kanza or players like Jacob Ramsey or players like Ali Watkins. So I think they know, I think they know that they can see the wood from the trees and they know that club progression mm. is what gets them into get it's what club progression is almost what gets you gets you remembered. And England yeah. squads get you audulated, if that's an actual mm. word, if that makes by sense. By the rest so of the football. Yeah, by the rest of we already know everything football. about Ezra Cantor, but you know, yeah. nationwide, I suppose, other clubs wouldn't really even give him a, a second thought, I suppose. It's funny you mention Emery, actually, because I'm of the same school of thought of you, that to stay at body more and work on what you know, Emery wants you to work on as a professional, as an individual, is more beneficial to him and to Aston Villa than to go and travel to, I think, Poland is where they play in Ukraine, uh, and Scotland with Gareth Southgate to sit on the bench most yeah. likely is that worth it anyway I would suggest it isn't I think gone are the days of players going up to their national side and kind of learning off these better players around them is probably long gone I, I think it, it isn't that I think the England squad 10-15 years ago was you've got loads of Man United Chelsea Liverpool players yeah. and if you're from a lesser club you go and see what it's like to train with the better players I think there's so many good players now throughout the rest of the league that Edry Conser is training with some brilliant players at, at Aston Villa not necessarily going to England and going, well, they do things so differently at Brighton or whatever. Like it's, you know what I mean? And I agree with you in that aspect. And the reason I agree with you is because back, if you even, if I'd nearly go back a bit further, 20, 25 years ago, everyone was playing 4 4 2 and everyone was playing overlapping mm. fullbacks and everyone had a hard man in midfield and everybody had a, had a fella in midfield that, that would run all day long and they had a big man up top and they had a small man up top. And that's the way English football was played. And it just, you, you interchanged the names. So when you went and you played with international football, it was so similar to what you were playing um, yeah. because you could play that. The game of football hadn't really evolved. And now you look at, they go to, they go to, with the England squad and they're playing a completely different system. So it's more beneficial for Ezri Kanza to have it, to be brainwashed into Unai Emery's system and to stay at, at Bodymore Heat. And, and I'd yeah. say Kanza does understand, like, obviously he understands that. Um, and, uh, and, and you're dead right when you say that. When he goes there, he's going to spend his time probably learning an inferior setup. And what I mean by that is that 99% of international squads, because they've got so little time to work with them, it's a very watered down game plan. It's a very simple game yeah. plan, which deals with, you know, box positioning and stuff like that. And it's, uh, you know, you just have to paint by numbers when you go to international football, and then you look for your Harry Canes to come out with three goals at the end, at the end of a two game yeah. series. That's what happens. And um, whereas when you're with Villa, there's a bit more to it because uh, you're getting to in-depth knowledge of how the rest of the, the team is working, you know. So um, that's a great point you make, actually. The, you know, those days are gone of playing with players at, at a higher calibre. It doesn't really matter because it's all about system football now in the Premier League. Mm. The only thing I would say is that, and this is probably a, a me thing more so than anything else, is that I do kind of judge how well a, a Villa squad is doing, probably in terms of their own personal careers, based on how many internationals are in the side. When Villa went down to the Championship, not many internationals played for, for Aston Villa because they weren't <laughs> good footballers. The better Villa get, the more players go off to international football. And to have the England squad come out and there'll be nothing in there. I know we don't have loads of English players like you would again. 30, 40 years ago where the vast majority of, of an English side was English. You know, we have got a lot of international start of the Villa squad, but it is just weird, I suppose, to not have any English ones just because we have churned out so many English players over the years. Mm -hmm. Again, you go back 10, 15 years and you've got Stuart Downing, Ashley Young, Gareth Barry, James Milner, the likes of those all in the squad at the same time, never mind just over the course of a, a few years. A bit of a, a tangent, I guess. Enketia over Watkins, Really? I know Watkins hasn't scored in the Premier League this season, but I'm, I'm again, glad you like brought it up. Trying something different, I guess, I guess for, for Southgate to go with Enketia, and you kind of go, oh, all right, well, I kind of respect that because that's my argument for why don't you try as we concert. But if you're talking about it from an experience point of view, I'd pick Watkins over Enketia to, to play if I was picking the side. So, again, play a lone striker role for sure. 
Oh, there was rumours Arsenal wanted to buy Watkins because he was better than Nketiah. <laughs> so, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I know, it's, it is mad. Uh, I don't know. I'd, like I said, I don't think I'll, ultimately I don't think I really care wh- whether Conte is in the squad or not because I'd rather he did th- better things for Aston Villa. I just think mm. if you're a professional, the pinnacle is being called up to what is a, a pool of what, 20, 25 players. You're the best of, of your nation at that time. But again, it's qualifiers against Scotland and Ukraine. I don't think it yeah. really matters. But having said that, if he's not being picked in these stages, even if he has a very good season, he probably doesn't get picked for the European Championship squad either. So yeah. you've kind of got to get in at these stages to get in for the tournament as well. Um, so it's probably a case that, as you can't tell, never play for England or South Coast there. Yeah, that could be the case. And, and to be honest with you, it would be a bit of a travesty because as you can see, I'm feverishly typing here to <laughs> because I always go back to Harry Winks' 10 England caps. Let that one yeah. sink in for you now. Let that one sink in for you now. Um, and if mm. Jacob Ramsey goes without an England cap and Harry Winks has 10 England caps, are you really picking the best te- best 25 players <laughs> in your, within your nation? You know, and look, once again, Harry Winks is a better footballer than me, you know, so, but yeah, I'm course, just saying yeah. that, the, the, you know, the players have, they've taken a chance on certain players and Harry, Harry Winks' is metronomic is the day is long, you know, you pass him a ball, he'll pass it five yards to the left and right of him all day and that's what he does and I'm sure he's going to be good at Leicester this season. But is he a 10 cap uh, England player, I, I'm just not 100 percent sure. And then obviously you've got you've got people like David Nugent and all those as well that have England caps. And look, we're we're not much better over here in Ireland. We cap anyone <laughs> as long as they've got. Uh, uh, we we've capped people who don't even have real birth certs, like so it's absolutely fine <laughs> in that aspect. There's arguments to be made that there's a lot of talent being lost as well because the likes of Calvin Phillips are being been included in, in in squads like that. Albeit they're playing different positions. I suppose Jacob Ramsey is the kind of poster boy argument for why it's good not to get a call up sometimes injured with them in the under twenty ones over the summer and now missing Premier League football for Aston Villa and that's ultimately what most of us here care about, I guess. Our opinions have probably flip flopped all over the place as we've kind of gone through this mental unpacking of the situation over the last fifteen minutes or so. So I'm keen to see what people watching or listening think about the concert situation and the Watkins one, to be fair. So get involved in the comments with your thoughts. Neil, thanks for joining me. Thanks for your thoughts uh, with an outside perspective. Thanks everyone for watching along and uh, we'll see you soon.